All right, folks, welcome back to the channel and to another Hickory Hacker course vlog. This week, we're in Steel City, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, playing pre-1900 gutty golf at the Bob Nine nine-hole layout of Bob O'Connor Golf Course in Shenley Park. The first nine holes here at Shenley date back to 1897, followed by another nine in 1903 designed by Mark Ormiston. And that course is fairly unchanged over the years, though First Tee Pittsburgh, which now runs the course, has put together a nice little composite nine hole layout that we'll talk about as we go. Here's What's Under the Arm, sponsored by McIntyre Golf. As I mentioned, using my pre-1900 authentic irons and a replica long nose club, along with a limited flight braid line cut ball from McIntyre. And here's what I've been doing so far in my gutty rounds this year. 54 gross average, 42 net average, and 13 Stableford point average. That's primarily what I keep track of in these gutty rounds is Stableford points. I'll talk about that as we go. Par 34, 2,400 yards is what we've got going here at the Bob 9. It starts with a par 4, 408 yard first hole, toughest one in the layout. Here's my best bud, Tim Shaw, using his modern clubs. And here's me. Trying to knock the rust off after a seven hour drive to get to Pittsburgh. Gotta be honest, I was definitely feeling it, but uh, no excuses. You gotta use what you've got. And uh, definitely enjoyed the walk through this historic golf course. Nice view of the skyline on several holes. Here's my Circa 1894 Peter Paxton General Iron. Just trying to knock the rust off here in the early going. I got lucky here. This one went into the street, but got a nice bounce back into the grass. That you'll see in a moment here. So if you're new to the channel, and I know many of you are, what you're seeing here is me basically playing pre-1935, actually in this case, pre-1900 golf with authentic equipment. So these irons are authentic irons from the 1890s. The uh, long nose play club that I use from the T is a replica because uh, you might not want to use an authentic one of those uh, for fear of breaking it. And then the ball I'm using today is a period accurate replica of the gutta percha ball that would have been used pre-1900. This is the limited flight braid. And if you look in the description, I've got more information about the history of the gutta percha ball. And this particular ball, made by McIntyre, mimics the ball flight, uh, including the limited distance and the feel of a gutta percha line cut ball. So even on the best strikes, it doesn't travel that far. And in you know the hands of a average at best golfer, the Hickory Hacker, uh, definitely doesn't go that far. Uh, and that brings me to the other point. Uh, if you're new to the channel, you'll notice that I'm not a great golfer. But I think I do a pretty good job of conveying my passion for the game and the history of the game. And uh, that's really what the spirit of this channel is all about. If you want to watch a good golfer, there are plenty of YouTube channels out there. If you want to watch what I think is more representative of most golfers out there, then I think you'll find that here on the Hickory Hacker YouTube channel. And I appreciate you tuning in. All right, getting back to the action here. After that decent tee shot pretty good chip up to the green. You'll notice that the uh, tee shot was uphill. This is one of the holes that first tee Pittsburgh kind of placed in the middle of the existing layout here at Bob O'Connor uh, to make this composite nine hole course. This nine hole course called the Bob Nine is the official course for first tee Pittsburgh. So a lot of, you know, new golfers, uh, younger golfers, use this track to kind of hone their game and, and get interested in the game. And it works really well for that. That's why they have these uh, artificial turf tee boxes, easier to maintain. And um, Tim was really enjoying these tee boxes. Bouncing around up there, Tim. This is a par four here, and uh, he's flirting with an eagle. You'll see where his drive ended up here in a little bit. Uh, but again, another beautiful skyline view of Pittsburgh there. And this is a really cool layout uh, for, for First Tee Pittsburgh and for Gutty Golf. Uh, I wish I would have put some better swings on the ball. I definitely had a, should have stayed out of the rough. The rough was very thick and uh, very penal. Uh, but 
you know, that's part of the name of the game. On a shorter course like this, you have to have some teeth somewhere. And uh, the rough, I think, is definitely that. And the elevation changes. Uh, this was the first time Tim and I had played this routing. So we didn't really know where to go in certain instances. And that might be somewhat attributable to the higher score you're going to see from me today. But also, you know, it's just um, first time playing a course. There's always quirks you have to learn. And that was Tim's eagle attempt. Great, great drive there. Almost drained that chip, too. We had a little friendly competition going, but Tim started pulling away pretty early. Though I put a little pressure on him with this. Well, I shouldn't say I put any pressure on him. That was for double bogey. Tim's putting for birdie here, so he's already got this hole wrapped up. But, uh, yeah, Tim put together a really nice round here, and I'm looking forward to showing you more of his shots as Good we bird. go. All right, number four is a par four, 247 yards. Notice a fairly common theme here. Most of the par fours are short, but have some kind of varying terrain or tree situation to navigate that make it a little bit more difficult. Tim piped his three wood right down the middle of the fairway there. Meanwhile, I'm still trying to figure out how to use my sand tees with the artificial turf. I was using sand tees on every, every hole, but I think I was um, not quite piling up enough sand to get it high enough for some reason. And this is actually the first round where I started to really have trouble with the McEwen Long Nose Play Club off the tee. If you watch my course vlog at Metamora Fields, I was hitting that club really well, and I'm not sure what went wrong between that round and this one, but definitely having some issues off the tee. You'll see more of as we go. Anytime you can't get off the tee or at least into the fairway, you're putting yourself behind the eight ball immediately as far as your score is concerned. And I'm not a good enough golfer to recover from most of those bad tee shots. I also mentioned earlier that uh, I primarily keep track of Stableford points for these gutty rounds uh, rather than just keeping track of the score, which are often higher. Um, you know, Stableford's just more fun, and it's kind of the high handicappers saving grace in a tournament. All right, number five is par three, 175 yards. Here's the shot of the round. Tim using his eight iron. And flirting with an ace. Oh. It's to the left of the pin, but it's pretty close. It's very right? close. You'll see just how close in a little bit. Yeah, still trying to figure out the T height. And again, dealing with some pretty thick rough. You know, rounds like this, I'm, I'm used to it because I'm not a great golfer, but you just kind of have to find a club that does work for you. Unfortunately, this Circa 1898 Taylor's Mashie made by Cannon Taylor is my go-to club when everything else is just kind of rough. And um, that's my best recommendation when you're getting into hickory golf is, you know, usually it's a mashie. Uh, you know, find that club that you can hit consistently more times than not. And then when you're having issues with the other clubs, just go to that one. And even if it's shorter, you know you're going to hit decent shots with it. And uh, it kind of helps right the ship a little bit. So here's Tim's birdie. That's how close he was to a hole in one. Good. Not bird. bad. All right, number six, par four, 227 yards. Another short one, but we did not know where the green was on this hole from the tee. So Tim just picked a line and ripped a three wood. Well, See, that's going to be perfect. I think that's going to be pretty good. <laughs> this guy. So that's the line. Under oh, that that's the line. Under that brick. <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to be able to follow that line going over the trees. But, you know, we got decent contact. I ended up slicing it right into a clearing. Unfortunately, I lost my braid and had to take a two-stroke penalty. So I'm sitting on my fourth shot here, and I'm using now my hand-hammered, homemade hand-hammered gutty replica. This is a Wilson Duo Soft that I popped in a toaster oven to get the dimples off and then uh, just hand-hammered my own lines on it. Uh, this is to replicate what the balls would have been like pre-line cut era. So this would be like 1870s, 1880s, when the gutta percha balls were hand hammered. All right, number seven, par four, 259 yards. 
I'll say too about the uh, hand hammered replica, even though it's a Wilson Duo Soft core, it um, it doesn't fly very well because of the lack of dimples. That was our other playing partner. I wish I remembered his name, but uh, he had a real nice swing there. And um, yeah, if he's watching, drop me a line so I can make sure I mention you in the uh, the notes below. Got another rough tee shot for me. Uh, actually whiffed on the first shot. So I've already racked up um, several strokes here on this hole. That was the weird thing about the turf. I, I just couldn't get the height of my tee right, and then it was messing with my depth perception, and I literally whiffed on uh, two tee shots here. You'll see the, well, you won't see it because I'm not going to show it to you, but I counted the stroke, um, and uh, that happened to me a little bit later in the round as well. Uh, I can only attribute it to just not being comfortable, and um, I'm a sensitive flower, I guess. I need conditions to be ideal in order to bloom. Meanwhile, Tim's just chugging along here. I believe that was another par. Nice. All right, number eight, par four, 358 yards. This hole's a combination of the existing 16th hole on the O'Connor 18 layout, which is the uh, original 18 hole layout, and the seventh green. So again, another creative way that the first T team combined some fairways and greens to make up this composite nine hole layout back in 2015 for first T Pittsburgh. Finally found a fairway off the tee. Then I also found a tree. Still, tree helped me out a little bit, gave me a little bit distance there. It could have been worse. I'm using the Peter Paxton General Iron here from 1894. And this was my shot of the round. Real nice contact there. That would have been more like what I would have had if I had been in the fairway more often today, I think. That one rolled up just over the back of the green here. But I was feeling pretty confident with my ability to get this close using the putter the and almost ones. putted it in. So that's my last Stableford point of the round. That was a bogey after you take into account handicap strokes. Number nine, par four, 361 yards. This was the other hole that I whiffed on. Uh, nice ball. Maybe one day I'll show a blooper yeah, reel. Not to say that a lot of these rounds aren't already blooper reels, but um, yeah, I like to show every shot because I think it's important to show every shot, the good and the bad, but uh, I felt like I'd spare you uh, just pure whiff on the tee. Very strange. I, I, that only happens to me with the Long Nose Play Club, too. It, it happened another round uh, that I wasn't filming. And, uh, yeah, it really kind of shook me a little bit. <laughs> that is the worst feeling, to feel like you're right on the ball and you're going to make good contact and then completely miss it. The only thing I can think of is it's just one of those clubs that hasn't translated well for me to my uh, single-plane golf swing, which I've been using for about a year now. We'll see. I'll keep working on it. I'm using the mashie here from the fairway, trying to get up to the green, and it just clipped a branch there short of the green. Otherwise, pretty happy with that shot. I showed you two birdies from Tim as well as several other good shots. He ended up with a 39 in this round, five over par. So that's his best showing on my channel. Congrats to Tim for that. And I should probably do more putts one-legged worked out for me there all right that'll do it from bob o'connor golf course in the bob nine layout looking forward to coming back again and trying the o'connor 18 at some point it's a fun golf course i ended up with a 62 gross 52 net on the bob nine not my greatest showing hopefully i can do better next time that raised my average season average to a 55 gross 44 net and lowered my stableford average to 11 points so i've got some work to do but uh looking forward to it all right, that'll do it, folks. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this round as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. Helps me out a lot. And if you're interested in getting into Hickory Golf or want a beginner set for either pre-1935 or gutty, reach out to me at thehickoryhacker at gmail.com and I'll get you set up. Thanks again, folks. See you next time. Take care.